Boeing is expected to send its first crewed mission into space next week. The Starliner, Starliner space capsule will launch two NASA astronauts to the International Space Station on Monday. This mission serves as a final demonstration before the spacecraft can be approved to fly routine space trips under Boeing's commercial crew program. This follows years of trouble for the aerospace giant, which my colleague Mark Strassman discussed with the astronauts who will board the Starliner. I don't look at it as a setback. This is understanding our spacecraft. You'd much rather be on Earth wishing you were in space than in space <laughs> wishing you're on Earth, right? Despite all the setbacks, full confidence absolutely. in Starliner, full absolutely. confidence in Boeing? Yes, at this time, this, absolutely. Yeah. CBS News space consultant Bill Harwood is at the Kennedy Space Center in Florida. All right, Bill, good to see you. Let's start with those setbacks. The astronauts going into orbit aboard the Starliner next week noted. What are they exactly? You know, Elaine, back in the day when they announced these contracts back in 2014, the idea was for SpaceX and Boeing to begin flying astronauts in 2017. Well, Boeing had a, has had a series of problems, uh, everything from trouble with their parachute harnesses to uh, electrical tape, protective tape that posed a flammability uh, problem, and a lot of software issues. They launched an unpiloted test flight uh, that had some serious software problems. They almost didn't get the spacecraft back. Boeing then paid for a second test flight at its own expense, and while that one went well, additional problems were uncovered in the process. Um, but as uh, Butch Wilmore, the commander, has told us repeatedly, that's the past. Uh, they believe they've addressed all of those problems. They think the spacecraft is safe and ready to fly, and they said we wouldn't be here if we didn't believe that. So, you know, fingers crossed, but uh, hopefully we'll have a good flight. Well, aside from its aerospace endeavors, Boeing has been under intense scrutiny, as you know, in recent months. To what extent is that adding to the importance that this mission be successful? Well, you know, it's interesting because I think a flight like this would, have, would be important to Boeing and to NASA, regardless of Boeing's other problems uh, in its aircraft division. But you're right. You know, the optics here are what they are. You know, Boeing has run into major problems uh, on the aircraft side of the house, raised questions about an erosion of quality control, uh, things they're still trying to address. Now, the Starliner managers for Boeing have been asked this repeatedly. They say this is a completely separate operation. Uh, they think the problems they've run into in the past are, are, are kind of inevitable in developing a new spacecraft. They've had more than their share, but they don't see this as, as a lack of quality control or anything like that. But uh, make no mistake, this is important. Boeing needs to have a successful flight here, or I think it'll make a bad situation even worse. And, and I'm wondering, Bill, from the perspective of NASA, because um, you and I have talked before about the way forward here for the United States space program is going to be these partnerships, right? It is not a NASA vehicle itself any longer that will be taking people um, in and out uh, of orbit. Um, for NASA, how much is riding on a mission like this? Well, quite a bit. You know, up until this point, SpaceX has been the only game in town to carry astronauts to and from the International Space Station. Now, if you think about it, if SpaceX ran into a major problem, say a rocket malfunction or something that grounded the SpaceX, there wouldn't be a way to get astronauts to and from the station, and that'd be a big deal to NASA. So the plan all along has been to have two providers building independent spacecraft, so the odds of a common defect grounding both would be virtually non-existent. So they want that redundancy. They want to have two qualified spacecraft in case of problems that might ground one of them so they can guarantee keeping the space station piloted or crewed uh, through the end of the decade when the program is going to be retired. So it's a big deal for NASA, no question about it. And all of this happening, Bill, at a time when they've got obviously a close eye, NASA does, on what other countries are doing with their own space programs, right? Oh, absolutely. No question. You know, uh, Russia, of course, still launches its Soyuz. The Chinese have an active uh, human space program. They just launched uh, three Taikonauts to the Chinese space station, brought three back down. And as we know, uh, earlier today, they launched an unpiloted moon mission that's going to land on the far side of the moon and bring samples back to Earth. Quite an ambitious program. Ambitious. And the space race certainly does sound like it is on. Bill Harwood, Bill, always good to talk to you. Thanks so much, Bill. My pleasure.